So just pay attention to what you're walking over. Well, yeah, they're all just off cuts. Yeah. Cool. But the whole building is supported by these huge columns. And uh, these columns, sometimes you'll see signs on them that will say carry 300 pounds a square foot, 250 pounds a square foot. And they splay out at the top to make this interesting architectural character that we'll be able to highlight during our reconstruction. This is the old courtyard. And you can see this is an infilled courtyard. Okay. And so it's real easy to take these beams out and then just open this up to the sky and bring a, a big flood of natural light into this courtyard. Which okay. will illuminate the backside of this space, which so, will be really, really cool. So bringing it back, yeah, I think that is cool. Are there any special uh, considerations, you know, with regard to its history, restoration, anything like that, as you uh, start to retool it? Well, we'll, we'll try to keep as much of the, um, you know, the historic character of the building intact. And it's, you know, as you know, it, for its, when it was in full operation, it was the biggest furniture factory in the world, which is kind of fun for us because we developed the Berkey and Gay building in Grand Rapids, which at its time, prior to this building being the biggest furniture factory in the world, was also the biggest furniture factory in the world. Becoming a bit of a thing for you, huh? Well, my dad was a photographer who worked at Steelcase, which at the time was the biggest furniture factory in the world. <laughs> so, so it is kind of fun. So you'll it's see, in your roots, I guess. You'll see this part of the, um, of the courtyard wasn't infill, but this would give you a feel for the difference of the natural light that will be cascaded into these spaces. Now we'll go upstairs to the second floor. This is so cool. Maybe up here would be easier to talk. Evan, did you get a close up on these yet? On the bricks? Not yet. Just want to point these out real quick. Wood off cuts they used uh, for the floor throughout the factory. Oh, neat. So this is as far away as you can get from the lake in a condominium that faces the lake. Okay. So this is the worst view you could have because it's the second floor. And, uh, and you still have these amazing views of Muskegon Lake. And you'll be looking across green space. Uh, and you can see that's the municipal marina, the Hartshorn Municipal Marina owned by the city. Um, these units on the first floor directly below us will actually be the pet friendly units and that's where someone can have their own fenced in yard where they could have their dog and they could potentially put a hot tub or you know obviously all the lawn furniture uh, goes out there um, so a really unique space but then up here you're a little more elevated and as you go higher your views get better and better of Muskegon Lake and then as you look across the building there some of those walls are the old remnant walls of a 200,000 square foot building that used to be here that was removed in 2017 okay. by the former owner because that was the one building that wasn't structurally sound. It was built vertically with concrete but horizontally with wood and that deteriorated over, t deteriorated over time. Where if you look here, what's exciting is this building is level everywhere you look and the corners are exact 90 degree angles and nothing is sinking or shifting everything's real solid built to stand the test of and, time and while it hasn't been taken care of well because of the way it's been built back when it was overbuilt um, for the use that required 250 pounds a square foot of support sure. uh, it really survived the elements well so that's the exciting part about the project the challenging part is the sheer size combined with um, the removal of some of the environmental aspects that are expensive. Um, but we, we studied that very uh, intently during the due diligence phase and we knew what we were getting into before we bought it. So when you see when you see a building like this, I mean, obviously most people I think are just kind of acquainted with, uh, you know, the crumbling beige brick exterior and uh, you know, the broken windows and all of that. When you see a space like this, what's your first thought? What occurs to you? Well, the windows have to come out anyway. <laughs> the crumbling brick is from the old building. So once you peel that back, you've got a really nice wall in great shape behind it. Um, the tuck point is primarily on the parapet walls. Uh, this is all going to come out because it's all going to be glass. From this column, 
to this column is pure glass with four 10 foot to 12 foot tall panels of glass that stack on top of three of them that stack on top of the fourth one. Um, the living room and the kitchen is all in the area of the veranda so when you open up the veranda it becomes part of your living space and then um, you know we've got plenty of width plenty of depth and uh, lots of land for parking and every condominium will have two indoor parking spots and the apartments are likely going to have one indoor and one outdoor parking <laughs> spot um, so there's there's so much you can do because you have 650,000 square feet of space to work with and we have 15 acres of land to work with and almost every angle of this building has some view um, of Muskegon Lake. So it's super exciting. It'll be the coolest projects we've ever done. You know, we have to go to the third floor to get to the other buildings because the railroad used to go between the two buildings. Wow, okay. Under the building. <laughs> like, that's like a tunnel. This right here? Uh, right out there? Yep. So the building is a victim of vandals and also some um, thieves. So they, they stole some of the uh, steel pipe that was you know, valuable as scrap metal that used to be the roof drains. So a lot of water has drained directly into the, into the, building. Into the building as a result of the roof drains being, being disconnected. And as a result, you'll see the, the variation in floor heights, all of which we're not concerned with. We care about what the ceiling looks like to see if it's straight, not the floor, because we'll remove the entire wood floor and there'll be nice straight concrete underneath. How does something else though? Look at that. Yeah, if you is step is through here, damage? you want to go this way. This way? I would, just because that's the old courtyard. Never oh, know how it's over the old cart. Yeah. Never know how strong it is. Yeah, good point. Gotcha. Good, good point. This is like a fun house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that wild how the floor is wild? It's wild. From all the water. Waves. Just expansion and contraction over the years. Look at that. Oh, and they've, they've laid it over top of uh, the offcuts. They did. Okay. So we're going to. This goes on and on. So we're just going to weave through here. Roy, the staircase I need to go up is right over here, right? Uh, just for reference, that, that wood wall over there is facing the parking where your car is. Okay. Anything that's in a corridor, which will be on this side of the courtyard and on that side of the courtyard, that'll be frosted glass. Okay. So the people that actually have windows looking into the courtyard with clear glass will have 100% privacy. Awesome. So that'll be the back corridor of the units that face the lake over there. And then these units will be one bedrooms on both sides. So we'll use the space of the equal space over here for a set of one bedrooms facing this direction, a set of one bedrooms facing the other with a corridor down the middle. Over here, the corridor will be in the back on the frosted glass side, so there'll be full privacy. Beautiful, beautiful. And you, again, you said all of this would be all this comes stripped out. out. Everything down to the ground. Trees, that'll be a forest courtyard. There'll be trees and plants, picnic tables and grills down in that courtyard, just like we did at Boardwalk in Grand Rapids. Okay. And we'll call it the forest courtyard. And there's not very many courtyards in the West Michigan market that have little forests in them. No, no, it's pretty expansive. You could do obviously a lot with this. There will be lots of different living environments and people will think this is where I want to buy and then they'll take the tour and then they'll figure out I would rather live over by the forest courtyard. No, actually I'd rather live by the pool. Hold on, this is not looking at the pool, it's looking at the lake and I'm closer to the lake, I'd rather be here. <laughs> and so it's always that way where people change their mind three times before they actually figure out which unit they're gonna put their money on. That's the, that's the, be the beauty of it with you know, so many curate. This is, um, this is where we're walking close to the clubhouse 
and now into the clubhouse. Right here would be the clubhouse behind the pool deck. And in all of our projects, we have sort of this um, weird scenario where the condo association boards, after we give over the control to the condo board, they can't decide, do we make the clubhouse reservable or not reservable? Is it always available for all of the residents all of the time? Or is it reservable part of the time? And here we can solve that problem because it's a big enough project. This one will be reservable. And that one, which is even bigger, is not reservable. So you'll have a reservable and a not reservable. So okay. A lot, again, cool. a lot of options. And uh, it seems like a lot of amenities as well. More amenities than any project ever. This is nice. There he is. Oh. Watch your step here, buddy. Wow. Yeah. You can see that parapet wall is in good shape. That one's in pretty good shape. This one, not so good. This one actually fell off in a storm, most likely. So we have to rebuild that parapet wall. But then those window openings will drop down to be full opening sliders to the clubhouse behind it. On the floor, okay. And that'll be the, most likely the reservable clubhouse. And then all that brick will be removed from that wall and those will all be glass sliders that open. And that'll be the clubhouse you can't reserve. It's open 24 seven to the residents to use. And then here, here's where this large pool sits in the middle, flush to the roof deck. We'll remove this tree, of course. Um, and then there will be a hot tub in the back, a hot tub that will hold like 20 people that okay. will stay open year round. The pool will be seasonal. The hot tub will stay open year round like we do at Union Square in Grand Rapids. Um, you'll be able to see the change of seasons, the color changes, everything's visible from up here. Today is not a very clear day, but... Um, We're thinking sun, we can imagine it. Yeah, so you can see the channel to Lake Michigan right through there. But what's really cool about it is that stair tower right there, that stair tower also has room for an elevator. So we'll pull the elevator all the way to the roof of the whole building. And on top of that clubhouse will be a rooftop deck for the sunset. Okay. That'll be a little windier because it's not protected like this is. But when it's a calm day, you'll be up there and you'll have just an unbelievable experience looking straight at the sunset and you'll see Lake Michigan because you can see over the dunes to Lake Michigan and through the channel on a clear day. So it's really amazing. This will be, you know, we're proud of Union Square. We think it's the coolest pool deck in the, in the, in the state. Um, but Trying to one-up yourself a little we're gonna, bit? We're going to one-up ourselves. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Am I, am I in the hot tub like right now? Is that where I am? You're in the hot tub looking straight down Western Avenue and imagine all the lights on at night. Yeah. And, you know, you get the darkness of the street with the lights on both sides and you're looking straight past the Amazon clock tower towards High Point Flats. And um, imagine being up here during bike time or one of the festivals. It'll, be, sight, it'll yeah. be a great place to watch fireworks. Um, this smokestack we're going to try to retain for some signage to keep the history uh, of the building. Um, and then there's the marina. If you had your boat there, you'd be looking right at it from the hot tub. Sure. It'd be great. And you can obviously see the cruise ships pulling in as well. Exactly. Pretty cool. Okay. And this, you know, Wednesday night sailing regattas. Yeah. So it's, it's a pretty special place. Um, if you lived in those units over there, or if you lived in these units over here, uh, you'd have not just the view of the lake and not just the view of the city, but you'd see the glow of the swimming pool. And you'd also know when your friends are out there and you can go join them. <laughs> so, so. Sounds like a great lifestyle. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> and then there will be a fitness center in the building. So if you're not feeling good about yourself and you want to go to the pool deck next season, you start working out about right now and you'll be ready for spring. Never have to leave the building. <laughs> right. Sounds great. Like a cruise ship. I don't know if you're interested in this, but it's, to me it's fascinating when they, when they built these buildings in different time periods, decades apart, they would build a, a new building, or like this was the new building, and this remnant wall is from the old building. So you can see oh. that's totally separate. Oh, wow. Yeah, so if, you know. 
you got a powerful pickup truck, we just attach a chain and pull it over. <laughs> but anyway, so that's that wall is from the building that was built 20 years before this one, and then later got torn down because it was so deteriorated. And that's a good view of the pet lovers units where they'll have covered porches and then a grassed out a grassy area with a fenced in area for a hot tub. No, that'll be place great. For pets. That'd be great. I can pretty big see yard. That now. We yeah. did the same thing at Union Square and it made the first floor units just as popular as the top floor units. Feel pretty expansive, right? Yeah, it's just another amenity that you wouldn't expect. You move into a condo and you expect you're not gonna have a backyard. But in this case, we'll have a lot of units with backyards. We like to think also the people that you know decide to live in the smaller units, they view their city as their living room. So they may have a small living room, but the whole city is their living room because everything's within walking distance of their, um, of their residence. Sure, and I'm, I'm sure that appeals to a lot of folks. So we'll just go through here and we'll be in phase one, which is referred to on the architectural plans as building six. There's seven buildings here. So it's almost like doing seven projects in one site, not including all the vacant land that can be developed. Right. This is just crazy. Destination is only two flights of stairs and we're there. Okay. So this area will be it's very much like that building three we looked at with the long with the units that go between the pillars. And then you've got this full width of this space that would become your living room. Well, this, this gives you kind of a feel for your. Oh, wow. We'll break that. There's enough broken windows. There's 8,400 broken windows in this building. 8,400? Is our estimate, yeah. <laughs> Wow. So that's about half of them. <laughs> um, but here's the view of one of the phase one condos and um, where the rooftop decks would be. Because what we'll allow people to do, if this is the veranda right here, and there's this corner of your veranda, you could put a circular staircase here and then cut a hole right here in the roof. And then you could go to your own private rooftop deck. If you wanted, you could move that staircase inside of your unit and then build additional space on top of your unit as part of a penthouse unit that would be two stories like a townhouse but you have additional space that you add on to your unit on the top floor so okay. that's another option we've used in Grand Rapids and like it's pretty that. popular yeah it's just so odd to see all the moss and the so this is the only part of the roof that has to come off and be replaced because everything in this building is concrete except for this space right here. This is a little section that's steel and it's deteriorated and so we'll have to pull it all off and build a new roof. Okay. Yeah, all of the concrete still seems to be... This was an addition afterwards. From here down is all solid concrete. There's end units that have some huge advantages because in addition to the lakeward facing wall, uh, that one over there has a west facing wall that looks out towards Lake Michigan. So it's like full glass on two sides. Okay. 
the all-encompassing view. Mm -hmm. coming up to this deck if you want easily from that little deck and then you enjoy the sunset view because the sun sets right over those views. And then what's really cool for the people because we didn't make this a pool, uh, what's really cool for the people below is they each, each get one night of this roof as your own private space. Awesome. So everybody that has a private deck can do all these cool things up here. This. This will just be a hallway anyway. The view here is that way, so these units, we're standing above the corridor and then those will be the units. But those units will have windows over there, so those will be some of the apartments, not the condominiums. But it'll be nice that they look at this courtyard. Yeah. 